Corinna Kopp has been one of the most relevant female influencers since the birth of Clout in 2016. On Corinna's journey of becoming one of the most successful female influencers in the world, there was controversy, a lot of relationship drama, and some really bad decisions. <laughs> and she's hot. Nevertheless, she's regarded as one of the smartest businesswomen in the industry, amassing millions of followers, millions of dollars, and living one of the most impressive lifestyles you can only dream of. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into Corinna's ups and downs, exploring the secrets of her success, her journey to fame, and the hilarious heartwarming moments that made her one of the most beloved and successful creators in the entire world. All right, let's take a look into some of her early life. Nestled in the heart of the United States, a girl named Corinna Kopp was born on December 1st, 1995. Corinna's mother was German, which played a massive role in her upbringing. Every summer from the age of four years old, she'd go and visit her grandparents that lived in Germany and spend a considerable amount of time there. Her mother would teach her German, of which she's now fluent in today. Und ich bin 26 Jahre alt. Hey, what does that mean? Uh, I can speak a little German, understand a little German, and I'm 26 years old and I want cock in my ass. A few years later, Corinna Kopp welcomed a brother into the world named Brandon Kopp. Her interest in gaming began when she was just six years old, playing The Sims and Club Penguin on her computer at home. Her family life seemed to be pretty good. Her German grandparents seemed to be like any other loving grandparents who would spoil their grandchild at any given opportunity. When Corinna would come home with a good report card from school, they'd reward her with a clean $100 bill with a note from Oma and Opa. Seems to be an amazing, loving family with little to no issues, right? Well, sadly, this wasn't the case. See, Corinna had an older brother that I hadn't mentioned called Chris Kopf, who tragically ended his own life in 2007. With a distant father and a lost brother in the picture, and no time spent in the States to hang out with her home friends during the summer holidays, it's safe to say that her childhood was pretty rough. As a hormone-filled teenager, she attended William Fremd High School, where popularity was not hard for Corinna. <laughs> I'd say most of my body count has definitely come from high school. Like, yeah. I like I thought at one point it was cool to see how many guys you could have sex with. Like, it was a game. I was like, oh, yeah, the more guys I have sex with, like, the cooler I am. That's impressive. That's I, literally how I and thought. And then you didn't have enough. You went back and you did it with one of your teachers. Yeah, I did fuck one of my teachers. Overall, her time at high school was a great experience, and she socialized a lot as one of the school's cheerleaders. Towards the end of her time at high school, she got her first job working at Hooters at a restaurant nearby in Schaumburg. This was the very start of her networking with other YouTubers, as the girl in this picture is Paulina Berogova, who's now got 343,000 subscribers and works in Playboy. However, Corinna may have never truly gotten to know Paulina as she only worked at Hooters for three days before quitting. When Corinna graduated high school, she moved out to California to work as a nanny in sweet, sweet Malibu while attending college. Before eventually dropping out from college, she'd been uploading pictures of herself on Instagram since 2012, and she'd garnered a large following. Looks beautiful. She'd use this Instagram presence to network her way up in the social media world. She got another job working as a personal assistant for Taylor Caniff, who was a social media creator turned actor, and she'd post videos with him in the early stages of her own YouTube channel. She used to absolutely love living with Taylor, and that's how her humble beginnings started in the social media world. However, Corinna later came out to say that Taylor's career was a complete joke and started tweeting about him publicly. Through Taylor, as a mutual connection, she'd go on to meet David Dobrik, who was popular on Vine at the time in 2015. She'd continue to grow very close with David all the way up to 2017, when David started to do his first vlog series. She featured heavily in David Dobrik's videos and was known for doing overly sexualized bits for his vlogs. The two would even kiss sometimes and instigate rumors of relationships, which was shut down after she revealed on Logan Paul's podcast that they never actually hooked up. Or did they? Never hooked up with Dave, huh? Mm, I mean, we never wrong. had s I think the internet knows we kissed like one time way back when at his apartment. Touch his at all? Not really, no. Not really. <laughs> what does that mean? 
No, I mean, maybe I, like, I don't remember. I have a really bad memory. This was I like, could see how that could be foggy. This was like four, four <laughs> years ago, okay. by the way. I would not remember if I hooked up with David Dobrik either. She continued to hustle at Hooters for a little bit of extra cash at the same time as working for David's vlogs and on her own social media channels. During the massive blow up in popularity of David Dobrik's vlogs, she stuck by his side and joined the problematic group that now call themselves the Vlog Squad. The Vlog Squad consisted of David Dobrik's friends who all featured in David's vlogs, and they all grew their own YouTube channels in their own right. One of these YouTubers was called Toddy Smith, who Corinna had a very public relationship with, and also, sadly, a very public breakup. The vlog squad that she was a part of was heavily criticized for being like a cult that was led by David, and everyone would do whatever he asked in order to get cameoed in his vlogs. Corinna was just as much of a sucker to this behavior as the rest of the vlog squad, as David asked her to get his name tattooed on her finger for $7,000 in cash and she went through with it. What did I just do? You just promoted my brand for the next couple of years, so, so thank you. Her breakup with Todd attracted millions and millions of views and Corinna was officially back on the market. The army of 13-year-old boys were sitting on the edge of their seats, and the men in their 20s who thought they actually had a chance were standing in line. Nevertheless, the man at the front of the line was no other than Turner Tenery, otherwise known as Tifu. Tifu was at the height of his fame when he started dating Corinna in 2019. Tifu was pulling in views on the streaming platform Twitch like nobody had ever done before. 100k viewer, but I'm kind of nervous, dude. What if my future ex-wife's watching or some shit? There's so many people watching me, dude. He was streaming Fortnite and amassing millions upon millions of views, which only helped build Corinna's following even more, as Tifu's audience was the prime demographic of horny teenage boys that would be obsessed with Corinna's overly sexualized style of content. Uh. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, relax. I'm just so stressed. Uh. Stop. I want a 10 minute compilation of me moaning. Oh my God. This year, she had secured a deal with Facebook Gaming worth millions of dollars to exclusively stream on just Facebook. She disclosed in one of David's vlogs that she was making over $100,000 a month just from streaming gaming content alone. I start a Patreon where I like reveal myself and show my boobs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't care. <laughs> I made $100,000 this month. You made a- WHAT?! Oh my god! Are you fucking serious?! Who do you have to thank? My boobs. Your boobs? <laughs> it's Rake <laughs> and Josh. Hey, 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 I want on the record that I, it also has a little bit to do with my personality. But very little. But very little. But $100,000 a month is pennies in comparison to what she's about to be making in just a few years. She was making massive strides for her own career. However, after doing a year of long distance relationships with Tifu, they decided that enough was enough and split ways. She commented on the whole situation on the YouTube channel The Night Shift, run by Mike Malak, who is Logan Paul's right hand man. Should we talk about my ex lover? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about Tifu. So, as you may know, Corinna has had a long-term relationship with the, probably the biggest gamer in the world, right? One of them. One of the biggest gamers in the world, Turner, Tifu. What the fuck is going on with you and Tifu? We dated for like almost a year. He only came to LA three times. And you were in Florida all the time. And I was in Florida for like weeks on end. Usually long-distance relationships don't work out if there's not an end goal. The end goal is you like, you live in the same place eventually. Right. He never wants to move to LA. Well, I can understand that. LA's I don't think I ever want to be in like Tampa, Florida. You really found a, a niche in the gaming world. Mm -hmm. You recently made huge news. You switched over to Facebook, officially, exclusively on Facebook gaming. Yes. What has gaming done for you? What has it done for your brand? I feel like it's really like expanded my brand. Now I'm not just like an Instagram stock gold digging bitch. I actually am a gamer now. <laughs> I do feel like this is something I'm gonna do for the rest of my Marina life. Marina was just tired of dating people outside of LA and wanted to find the next big person who might help push her further in her career, but also be the one that she could settle down with. With her connections growing bigger and bigger in the LA scene, she jumped onto the next biggest thing, which was of course, Logan Paul. Their first interaction was not a pretty one though. Corinna did not like Logan in the slightest upon their first interaction because Corinna had lost her brother to suicide. And of course, Logan Paul had an immense backlash on a video that he made where he was laughing over a body in the suicide forest in Japan. I made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment and I don't expect to be forgiven. 
I'm simply here to apologize. After they'd overcome that hurdle, let's say, they really enjoyed each other's company and started to date. Nevertheless, Logan had his fair share of problems with Corinna, which ended their relationship there. Prior to that, our only interaction was you uh, condemning me after Japan. Yeah. And the reason for that was because I lost my brother to suicide, remember? Yeah, I, know. Oh, I remember. Yeah, and so I was really, really, really upset about that situation. Then when we met, we talked about it for like four hours. Yeah. And I was like, this guy's great. I love him. Like, oh, thank you. I forgive him for everything. Well, I was surprised. <laughs> well, and, no, but I'm saying we've, ever since then, we've had a really great relationship. It actually has been great. Yeah. You, I noticed though once, like I, I had to call you out, you know, we were hanging out a little bit, you know. You get to know about the person you're with, obviously, and uh, I'm scared. And you know, you mentioned it at the beginning, beginning of the podcast. You sometimes complain like a lot, you know. <laughs> and, and you do. I mean, you do. And even I was like, I was like, it's not a problem, because like, you know, your your Twitter handle is literally Pouty Girl. Are well, that's you? That's why I think it, it really does bother me. People think I'm this fucking sex god in LA, and I fuck all these people because I. I mean, I can't remember the last time I had. <laughs> How long has it been? Just I think I've had sex with like one person this year and it was Logan. Well, oh. It's true. Corinna was flourishing off sexual content, but was also staying very reserved behind closed doors. Are you going to masturbate? Yeah. We haven't even gone out Corinna, yet. Corinna, Corinna, come David, on with us. I'm being serious. I'm so horny. <laughs> like, I swear to God, I can take my underwear off and they'd be dripping. Corinna was super successful in her own right going into 2020, and she was making all the right moves. She distanced herself from the vlog squad, who was having a lot of drama. News came out that one of them had assaulted a girl and and another one was dating a 16 year old when he was an adult. It was all a little bit weird. I want to start this video off by saying I fully believe the woman who came out against Dom and said she was by him. Um, as it was reported the next day, I got consent to post the video. Even though I got the consent to post that video, I should have never ever posted it. Corinna found herself in a lot of controversy in her time. One that sticks out to mention is the time that she got into beef with the biggest female streamer in the world, Pokemane. Corinna outed Pokimane for promoting gambling to kids from an old video that Pokimane had made. Nevertheless, Corinna was no angel herself and accepted multiple gambling sponsorships that pay hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to these streamers just to promote their website for a few hours. Corinna was also involved in an illegal crypto pump and dump scheme where she made a quick bag off her audience. Her general interest in crypto was limited, but she did tweet out saying that if she got 50,000 retweets, that she would get Dogecoin tattooed on her ass. And to be fair, she did stick to her side of the bet. This was all just one big marketing scheme which foreshadowed her next big move. Corinna dropped her OnlyFans on the 9th of June, 2021. She tweeted out a link to her OnlyFans and within just one day, she was already in the top 0.01% of creators on the platform. With this success came a huge amount of money. For just $25 a month, you were able to access all of her private content, including the option to message her directly. And for the suckers who really thought you could message her, then GG's in the chat, bro, because you honestly... I mean, you got played. It was 100% Derek from the IT department at your school who was being paid 16 bucks an hour to reply to you. Anyway, despite the skyrocketing success of her new page, her subscribers were immediately unsatisfied with the content that they'd paid to see. A lot of the content that she'd posted for her launch was just recycled pictures that she'd already posted on her Instagram and Twitter. Let me tell you that the 13-year-old army was pissed. She tweeted out saying, people who think my only fans are about to be just Instagram Instagram content, you're dead wrong. If I posted everything right out the gate, it would get leaked. Just wait. But Corinna is a smart businesswoman. She guessed that her OnlyFans content would get leaked immediately, and she wasn't wrong. People were flooding to the internet to try and find out where they could find premium content for free. This only increased her hype around her OnlyFans material and she slowly revealed more explicit content on her OnlyFans as time progressed, making her millions and millions of dollars. Like in the first two days of release, she made over a million dollars. This is my friend Corinna. She's kind of had a side hustle going on that we all know about, but look how much she's made. I want everybody at home to please buckle in because this makes me want to fucking vomit. This is absolutely 
insane. This is monthly. Monthly. Zane just texted her, I want to rock you. Up. I'll do anything for you. <laughs> David Dobrik posted a video titled She Made $4 Million in One Month. And it's now sitting at 10 million views, which is just helping to promote her page even more. Corinna's clout was next level at the hype of her OnlyFans. And she began hanging out with the next up and coming Twitch streamer, Aiden Ross. She participated in all sorts with him, including hot tub streams, and they'd grow out to be very close friends. Nevertheless, the public drama came not long after and they stopped talking. How are you? When are you gonna come over to the Bahamas and bend me over this uh, table and me on pick while I'm gambling on steak? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I, I think the answer to that question is uh, never. Corinna said, from what I can remember, the main reason we stopped talking was because he wanted more of a relationship and I didn't. Some people might say that it's a plausible argument that she just clings on to other successful people to stay relevant and promote her own channels. Or the counter argument is, is that she's one of the best networkers in the industry and networks with all the right people in order to remain successful. Which one do you think it is? In the middle of 2022, Corinna was forced to take a step back from Twitch streaming as she got herself permanently banned. And can we guess why? It's because she was wearing clothing that was too revealing. And I'm not showing that on here if you sick f you can go find that somewhere else. It's now been three years since we've seen a Corinna Cop video on YouTube, but she's still as relevant as ever. She's now very close friends with the streamer Aircool, and I think they live together slash did live together. Uh, I can't find any specifics in the research here, but she did actually take his virginity as well, which is pretty gnarly. I mean, fair play, man. Regardless of their viral clips together, she expresses that they are just friends. Coming into 2023, she's now dating a guy called Sammy Wilk, who is a low-key Spotify musician slash songwriter. He's got a few popular songs and it's believed that they're still together right now. Corinna accepted an exclusive deal with a brand new streaming platform, Kick, to exclusively stream on their platform. She has yet to stream a single stream on their site yet, but Twitter has announced it, so it has to be legit. She's clearly a master when it comes to networking her way up in the social media world and has made some excellent decisions in her life. She's also made some sketchy decisions too, don't get me wrong. Her own advice for getting successful is the following. Truly, really, I think I have the weirdest luck in the whole world because I met David at this random fucking show. We ended up being friends. I ended up hanging out with him in LA. And looking back on it, I had no, I, I had no, when he was vlogging, I didn't even know what vlogs really were. Like I didn't, I was, I didn't really watch much YouTube like growing up. So I was like, had no fucking idea until these things started blowing up and I was like, oh my God, I, I get it now. And then it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I'm like, holy fuck. Like now looking back on it, I had no idea what's fucking going on until I'm looking back on it like, holy shit, like this is, I just got lucky. I truly just was like friends with the right person at the right time. All right, kids, so go out there and, make, and get lucky. And make friends. <laughs> I mean, I will say, I'm the first one to say it. I didn't like somebody like you, you really worked for your platform. You took the time to make videos, whatever. I didn't have, I didn't really plan on being on the internet or doing internet things until I just started getting followers for being, being friends with somebody. I never had an, I never had an intention to be on the internet. I just started getting followers from David's following. And then I was like, okay, fuck, well, I should make money off of this. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Do you express your gratitude to David? Yeah, I think I should buy him a car. <laughs> no, but seriously, I do. I literally like joke. Like I say thank you every day, but I'm joking. I joke with him a lot. And I'm like, okay, so like what, like what do I buy you now? And now in 2023, Corinna did something unspeakably kind to repay David Dobrik for all of the exposure that he gave her in the beginning of her career. This has to be one of the most wholesome reactions I've ever seen. I am on my way to the Ferrari shop to go check out the Ferrari F8 that I'm about to buy for David. I am buying David Dobrik a Ferrari F8 out of my own pocket. It is a half a million dollar car and we are gonna go check it out for the first time. What's going on? How are you? Why have I been cornered into my home? <laughs> got you something. You got me something? I got you a present. Okay, what is it? But you have to close your eyes. I will, I'm just so nervous. Okay, close your eyes. Are you sure? <laughs> yep, I'm sure, I'm sure. Help me pick this out, so hopefully you like it. Yo, this is gonna, this, this trumps your fucking watch. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I'm Definitely. like shaking, this like I've never. trumps my watch. Like I've never. Kidding? No. That's not a watch for an I know. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna vomit. Same. I'm shaking like a little biatch. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> 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 
you right now. Hillary, get the f out of here. Oh my god. Oh my god. What the f? I, the, the thing is, I can't even ask if you're kidding because I know you're serious because you're so f rich, but this is crazy. <laughs> If I hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, I'll be donating a thousand pounds to a charity of your choice. The poll is on my profile and go and check out one of my videos if you enjoyed this one.